I'm now going to walk you through an example of what an A2 product design feasibility study could look like. Now, this, as you've got to remember, is what it could look like. Not everybody's is going to look like this. So at A level product design at A2 level, it will give you the chance like we have explored to showcase who you are as a designer, as you're not limited to any context or design brief set by the exam board. You need to think of why you want to study design in the first place. What is your passion and what type of designer do you want to be? C will not present A2 with a context. They want students to be creative in their approach and use the context loosely to establish their own creative and innovative design brief that solves a problem for a specific target market. After you've completed lessons one to three for the A2 NEA, you should have an idea of what you are looking at solving. So on this page here, you could put an example of your initial word association analysis where you've explored your context in different areas. So as you can see here, this is the start of one using the context of time, thinking about different associations of the meaning of time. The reason as a reminder that we do this is for most students, when we think of time, they will automatically think of a watch or a clock. However, this is not a critical analysis. So we could consider day to night, how long something takes, a connection, space, what happens in the day, light or dark, sustainability, resources, age, growth. They all include something that's associated with the word time. Then, once I have done that, and I have chose three different words from that initial brainstorm that I can look into further and do a critical analysis to try and find a design problem to solve using the 3 two, one approach as a guide that we went through in lesson three. So you could put your brainstorm here for your first context analysis. The second one here and the third one here. Now you might have done these on paper, so this is a good opportunity either for you to do a nice digital design or if you're really proud of the one that you've done on paper and you've added sketches and annotations and taken a lot of time with it, you can always take a photograph and pop it into your document. Now the next part is coming up with potential design briefs from your context exploration. Now these are examples of how to turn these statements into a draft design brief. Now I have used the example of using a table. In the table I've put who, what, why, where and when. So using your brainstorm that you did with the 321, you should be able to fill these in. You could include additional ones of should and could as you've seen on the PowerPoint. So this should help you when developing that working idea. So you're thinking, who is your target market or end user? What problem is your product aiming to solve? Why do we need this product or idea? Where will we use this product and when will we use it? Using these five W's as an information gathering tool will help us establish how we're going to solve this problem. Now we have our three sound ideas. It's time now to analyse them to see which one would be the best idea. For this, you need to conduct a SWOT analysis. Now you looked at this in AS, so you can revisit your NEA from AS or the resources from AS where we went over a SWOT analysis. Now S is for the strengths of the design idea or the solution. Now these are internal, so the actual strengths of the idea. Then you have the weaknesses of the design idea or the solution. Again, this is an internal feature. We then have opportunities and threats. Now these are external, these are outside of our control. So does this idea or solution provide any further opportunities? Or does this idea come with any threats? For example, competition. A SWOT analysis is a useful tool to establish if an idea is viable. A designer uses it as a decision-making tool to make sure the idea will be successful before spending more time on it. So you would like to conduct a SWOT analysis for your three initial design briefs that you have come up with. The next step is then making a decision matrix. 
So you need to ensure that your SWOT analysis is backed up with further decision making. A decision matrix is an effective way to do this. So here I've set out an example of how to conduct a decision matrix. Again, you did this at AS level, so please revisit these resources. You have your idea. You come up with some essential criteria. Now, I would say that coming up with five essential criteria that your product or your solution must have is a good number. You then provide each criteria with a weighting out of five. Five being that this is absolutely the most important. It 100% has to meet this criteria. Whereas one would be it needs to meet this criteria, but it's not that important if it does or it doesn't. So you score your criteria and give it a weighting. You then pop your idea into the table. You then score your idea against the criteria. So would this idea meet this criteria? If it 100% will, then you give it a five. If it absolutely won't, as in it is impossible that it will meet this criteria, no matter how hard you try, you give it a zero. You then times the weighting by the score. So this number by this number. You then add those up, which will give you your total decision matrix weighting. Now, the highest score from the decision matrix should be the best idea. But you need to evaluate this alongside the SWOT analysis to see which one is the best idea. Now you should be able to eliminate one of those ideas. Now we need to move on to the four P's. Now this is a marketing mix strategy. And if you watch the YouTube video by here, we'll give you further understanding about product, promotion, place and price. So you put your target market here, so the person. Now if this person or this target market changes, then this will influence what type of product it is and what it needs to have, how it's promoted, the actual price point of it and where it would be used. So the target market and the user is a very important piece of information. So using your two ideas that you have, you know your target market, so pop them in here and do a further exploration of what the product is, what it's aiming to do, what it should have and what it could have, how you're actually going to promote that product to the public, what price point is the product going to need to have, and also where it will be sold, where it will be used, and anything to do with place. Now, you need to do this twice, so there are two pages here for this. Now, from this, as well as your decision making, tricks and your SWOT analysis, you should be able to come up with the justification of the best possible idea to move forward. Now, thinking about those two ideas that you have, create two different mood boards. So look on Google, on Bing, on Pinterest and even in magazines and catalogues to find existing products that are like your idea. Consider your layout, remove the backgrounds, add keywords and even your own sketches. Create two exciting mood boards in A4 size exploring each of these ideas. So now you should have your final justification. You've got your SWOT analysis, your decision matrix, you've got rid of one of the ideas. You've come up with your four P's and you've created mood boards you should now be able to come up with the best idea. Now it's time to type up your best idea with a justification of why this is the best idea and the best design problem to take forward. Include your next steps for research and development as you would have seen me do on the example. This now should lead you on to the next stage of your project, which would be primary research, secondary research and market research.